series third visit to this circuit sees Luciano Savarol claim the pole in his Lennard. Melanie Claveno on the outside of the front row. This is as close as Claveno is going to get to a home race. Savarol led most of this race last year. Arto Kakinen and Alessandro Rossini in row two. Devereaux last year's winner and Gaspar Souza winner of the last race of Franz Hatch. Ashby in the 55 car and Jacob Card in the second Lennard row four. Roderick and Dwyer good qualifying efforts. Pliskin and Raketa in row six. Henton in car 11, and Scott Bates, car 88, fell out row 7. The inside of row 8 was actually supposed to be Jacques Bouvier in a promoter's option car, but he had an accident uh, after qualifying in uh, the morning warm-up, actually, and that car was withdrawn from the race. Uh, there was another incident in the morning warm-up involving Ingrid Hadeland, but we'll get to that later. Uh, Velocity Motorsports was entered into this race uh, with both their cars, but both of them withdrew, citing financial problems, so Velocity Motorsports uh, not really looking very good if they're going to uh, right now. Maximus Racing also having some uh, financial uh, problems as well, but Patrick Arsenault in car number 95 uh, will be starting this race. Instead of the 94, they brought car number 95 to this race. Bouvier, the uh, Perot car, was withdrawn uh, after uh, after qualifying. The two Velocity cars were withdrawn uh, before first practice, and that's what allowed Bouvier and Ingrid Hadeland to show up here. We're here at a standing start here, and the lights are out, and away we go! And Luciano Savarol in car number five does not get as good of a start as Clavino Rossini. A terrible start. And uh, Arto Kagan got a pretty good start in the nine, but looked like uh, Rossini did um, sort of fluff it a bit. And you see Rossini going backwards. Ashby nailed it in the 55, as Ashby is already charging forwards. Roderick now going to go by his teammates. So Rossini got an awful start. But now, Savarol peeks out, and he's going to try to make a run on Clavino. No, not quite. Does not quite have the grip here. Clavino squeezes him out just a little bit. Luciano goes wide, hits the little ditch there, slides back up into the side of Adrian Devereaux. The two former teammates um, at Hot as Walter Racing last year. Oh, they make contact, and I don't think Devereaux is going to be very happy about that. And I think... Um, Lucci, be careful out there. You're under investigation for that little thing with the seven car. Be careful. Slap one. It's Gary Hall on the radio there with Luciano Savarol. There is the Sua International car with Chris Davenport in the 84. Now Davenport rocketed off the line in that 84 car. And uh, we're going to see if we can keep track of this gorgeous car today. But Davenport, uh, this is um, it's not necessarily his sponsor's home race, but... Uh, a Davenport hoping to do well for sponsors. We think he's going to have this paint job on for the rest of the year, or for the balance of the year, we think. Uh, but uh, this 84 car is pretty quick in practice, so we should keep an eye out for him. It's what he needs to do. He's been outpaced uh, by his teammate most of the year. Now there is Ashby just clearing Adrian Devereaux around. Uh, had Adrian Devereaux clear in the second half of the course and fended him off. Ashby's having a fantastic start to the year. Already won a race road Atlanta. No wins on an oval yet, and I think if Ashby's going to be a serious championship threat, she'll need to change that stat quick, smart, or at least uh, improve her performances there, because that's been Ashby's weakness so far. Oh, Kuznetsov in the 15 is in trouble. You have Jenny Kuznetsov in the 15 car. One of the cats ups, he's out of the race. Uh, a little surprised. He was having a pretty good weekend so far, and that's a shame for him. As Melanie Claveno now trying to stretch the lead from Luciano Savarol as the two of them are pulling away a bit from Ashby in the 55. Uh, Devereaux holding station, and then behind Devereaux is Kekin, Roderick, and then it looks like Rossini. It looks like the Volpes one are uh, right in the step with each other. Matthias Taubman, car number 21, in the uh, one of the Melrose Racing Team cars. Team owner Daniel Melrose entering this. Oh, Taub's off the course. Oh, look out, look out. Oh, into Tom Moore, and both of them go off the course. I think Taub may have felt like. The 19 squeezed them out just a little bit. But at the same time, if you're pushed off there, um, it's sometimes it can be hard to avoid an accident. The Volpes have been having a, quietly having a strong year. They don't look like race-winning cars at the moment, but uh, they are definitely quick cars. Leonard Roderick has been outpaced by his teammate Alessandro Rossini for most of this for most of this year, but Roderick seems to be the only person not surprised by that. And I remember him saying last year that Rossini would be a tough teammate to beat. And here is Rossini, who is leading. Oh, no, he's blowing out smoke out the back of that car. So Rossini, early exit for him, even though the Italian was leading the championship coming into this race. But uh, this could be a title run for the number three car. He hasn't won a race yet, but there's a keyword yet. Whoa, Ian Cooper caught him in the worst possible spot there coming into turn two. 
Greg Woodard and the 41 Lycoya having a good weekend so far. Actually, both the Lycoyans are having a pretty strong, strong season so far. And uh, Woodard, in particular, seems to be sort of a sort of a stealth bomber here. He's sort of flying under the radar and picking up quite a few good results and having some pretty good runs in what are, quite honestly, some pretty bright, brightly colored cars. Um, uh, so Greg Woodard, car 41, trying to hold off Scott Bates. Carlos Riquetta in that 14 car also doing what he can there for Katziv. Here's Ingrid Hadeland. Now, car number 93, uh, th this car had an accident coming off that last corner there in the morning warm-up. It, it was a pretty substantial accident caused by a suspension failure. Uh, the team ruled that it was just a random part failure. Uh, but the uh, very unassuming Norwegian rookie uh, is uh, making her debut. It's a tough assignment to go out for your debut in, in race conditions with a suspension that was just re rebuilt. And for the first time ever, we have two Swiss drivers here in a Master Cup Series race. Patrick Arsenault, the uh, Dash Cup driver, is uh, running here. Uh, he is also from Geneva, Switzerland, uh, in Switzerland. So um, it's good to see. Uh, oh, Benoit Vukler playing way wide. Benoit Vukler has been playing with that. He's been really flirting with that uh, with that turn over there more than anyone else. I had a bit of a, had a moment there. Is Adrian Devereaux now? Whoa, Devereaux swings it wide. Swings it wide, or is he using that to get a bit more grip out there? Devereaux, whoa, Devereaux might get a good run here. Swinging around the outside there to get a run on Ashby, and he does it. Ashby was ready for was ready for Devereaux to attempt to pass, defended it, but Devereaux said, well, I'll just go around the outside then. Thank you very much, and takes over third. Great move there from the two-time champion. Arto Kakin and Carter. All right, Lord Chief, pit at this time, pit this time. Oh, Lenard's calling him in. The, the Lenards are being called in because, uh, or at least Luciano is, and I see Jacob Card's crew is set up as well in the pit lane. Ah, oh, I don't know why. I don't know why they're doing that. That that seems madness to me. They're, it's way too early, especially for that five car. He's pitting off cycle. That might win in the race, but I don't, I don't see why he'd do that. Seems to be uh, as Arto Kakinen now beginning to challenge Ashby in the 55 car. Ben having a decent start to the year. Uh, been uh, kind of overshadowed by uh, by Kevin Dwyer as far as the performances go, and I think that's just the way Arto Kakinen would like it. Kind of wants to be able to hide from the spotlight. Well, he's not doing that right now because we were looking at him. There's his teammate right behind Pliskin, uh, who, by the way, is quietly having a good weekend. Pliskin, uh, sort of best of the rest here. As you see him, he's currently in sixth. Uh, he's not doesn't quite have the fastest car, but he's doing what he needs to do to build points and to have a good run at the title. Pliskin's only won two races in his career, and uh, really, I'm a little surprised that number's not higher than that. But Power Sting Incorporated is a good team. Pliskin's a good driver, and I uh, think uh, we'll have to see what comes of him later in the year. And here is Jacob Card, who has uh, really been kind of a glutton for punishment a little bit this uh, so far this year. He's had... Uh, Hasn't really had too many finishes, and um, he's had a couple of had a couple of mechanical failures, a couple of accidents, but uh, the Canadian is having a solid year so far. Here's Gaspar de Souza in the 60 car, the winner at Brands Hatch from last, where he pulled some very ridiculous pit strategy out and made it work. Oh, he's pitting it! Oh, looks like Gaspar de Souza's pitting the 60 car, and they on there's no rush over there, so he's got a very serious problem. Packer Carroll is up to 23rd. And um, for as awful as uh, for as awful as Packer Carroll was during his tenure at Volpe, he's been amazing in this Manicor car. He's kept pace with Lewis Kingston, which is not a small feat by any stretch of the imagination. Keeping up with the Avenger has uh, been a very difficult ask for even such qualified drivers as Troy Adams. And uh, so this has really been one of Packer's best weekends ever. Lewis Kingston, his teammate's doing a pretty good job. Uh, it looks like he's jamming up the field. That's exactly what he's doing, and that's exactly what he needs to do. The Nomoto is not the fastest car in the field, and so when you got when that's the case, you have to pretty much jam up the field to get good results. And he's doing exactly what he needs to do. Look at the gap between Kingston and the car in front of him. Here's the nine of Arto Kakin, the 55 at Oh, Arto's off, Arto's off. Look out, look out, look out! Oh, heads up driving there by Roderick. The four-time champion uh, was ready for his teammate or his former teammate to come back on the track and nearly caused a huge accident. The two Hodges Walter cars are now first and second and are pulling away from the field at a pretty rapid clip. Ashby there in the background in that green car, but there's Melanie Clavin on the black and uh, neon green car. 
leading the race with Devereaux second. Cameron Taylor in the 26 car. Oh! Oh, into the wall! Oh, and he hits Azuma Kaziyama. The Sars have been having quite a bit of problems with the last section on this track, and those chicanes in particular, because uh, they seem to be, they're actually bouncing up on the curbs more than anyone else. Uh, very unfortunate there for Cameron Taylor, who's been doing a good job. Anyway, back to the hot is Walter du uh, duel for the lead. Clavino's a bit is ready for Devereaux. Devereaux's going to poke his nose in and try to swing it around the outside. Clavino swings it wide as well. Ho, ho, ho. Melanie's ready for that. Melanie Clavino was ready for that move. So, uh, Melanie Clavino paying, uh, doing quite a bit of mirror driving up there. As Ashby now doing a bit of mirror driving on her own. Naruto Kagana might have a run on the outside. No, denied. Roderick now having a run on Kakinen as well. A lot of mirror driving here, and uh, it's great that we get to see that without too many people complaining about blocking. Speaking of someone who's good at blocking, why don't we focus right on this car right after that? Anyways, Ian Cooper running in ninth. Uh, we don't normally see too many good runs out of that silver and pink car, but uh, this seems to be one of them. He just seems to be doing having a pretty good weekend so far. Now, even though Scott Bates has out-qualified him this weekend, for the most part out-raced him, this triple seven car ahead does have the upper hand temporarily. Here is Scott Bates in the 88 car, and oh, well, looks like I, looks like we got a party in the pits because looks like pretty much the whole field has entered the pit lane except the alert cars and the um, the two Lenards who pitted earlier. Now alert did win the drivers championship with uh, Michael Sykes last year, but uh, Adam Sampson and several of the people that were uh, part of the old Flash Racing team. Uh, ended up splitting off and becoming the Lennard International team. So, technically, the Lennard International team, some of the management there won the championship last year, but uh, uh, the American Launch Energy Racing team with Scott Stoyler, as we see here in the 13 car, and Chris Hines on the 12 car were the uh, name of the team that won last year. It's a bit of a complicated thing, but the, uh, the, um, uh, the short version is that the team that won the championship split off into two teams. I guess that's a simpler way to explain that, but Arto Kekkonen... Oh, no! I see smoke coming out of that car! I wonder... I wonder now if Arto Kekkonen may have over-revved it too much leaving the pits, because he came flying out of his pit stall, and, uh, well, he's out of it in that nine car. Very big disappointment for Arto and the Gessler, so I think he really needed the points to improve his position, position in the championship, but, uh, if he's going to form a title run, DNFs is... is no, oh, no! Luciano! I kept asked what Arto was doing in the middle of their racing line, but, um, oh, someone else went off. Ryan Matthews in the 06, one of the promoter's options. Oh, and he wasn't going to make that turn anyway. He just, he just lost it on his own. He came in there too fast. Yeah, we'll see that look like bullshit for you, too. Pit this time, pit this time. Oh, the five team not impressed with Kekkonen being on the racing line. Luciano not happy as here's uh, Peter Short and Daniel Melrose. Melrose the team owner there for the 22 team. Oh, Melrose a bit wide. Oh, Melrose! Oh, did you really want to do that? You're paying the bills for that. That wasn't going to work. Uh, Melrose. All right, let's get another look at it here. We're on board Joe Lenick in the All-American SAR here. Okay, so Peter Short goes wide to give the 67 room. Melrose has the spot and drives it off all on his own. Yeah, Melrose had the spot. And then he lost it. Uh, that's got to be gut-wrenching. When you get the promoter's option, you got three cars in, and all three of them run into problems in the same part of the track, less than 10, less than... We're not even a halfway yet, and they've already run into problems. As Adrian Devereaux is taking the lead from Melanie Claveno in the pit stops, but... Um, uh, Muff, uh, Melrose Racing Team having a pretty good, uh, uh, they're showing everyone how not to run a team so far as we look at the running order on the left. As you see uh, there, Tom Moore, last car in the lead lap. Kekkonen is obviously out of it. D'Souza's rejoined, but he's three laps down. He had a, he had a rather, looked like uh, they were under the car for a bit on that 60 team, and they're just going to hope, hope they get enough attrition here. Here we got an interesting battle. Christian Hines in the 12 cars at the front of this group, and he is... Uh, and he's got the two EFR cars all over him. Looks like this is a battle for eighth. Scott Bates a little bit into the ditch, swings it in. No, 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 not, that's not going to work. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it is. I stand corrected. Greg Woodard there in the 41. Jacob Card there in the 6. And Nasova is just catching up to this to this little group of cars. 
that aren't seeming to be able to break away from each other. Here's Card and here's Lennard. Remember, he's on the well, he's on an alternate strategy, a alternately mindless strategy. Uh, so he is on a bit low. He's on lower fuel, so we can see if Card may be able to get by the 13 here, the 13 of Stoidler, who is uh, having a pretty solid run for himself. Here's the Vienna Henton running up in seventh. Last year's Cariola winner is having a pretty tough year, but uh, Henton's grit and determination is clearly showing through at this drive here. And uh, if you look at, take one look at the Vienna Henton, the last two words you'd think she would have are grit and determination. Henton definitely has a sort of bullish fighting spirit that is uh, capable of bringing uh, some of these lesser cars, like the Lynx Racing car, up to the front of the field. Lynx Racing, this is their home race, technically. Uh, and Henton's doing everything she can for him right now. Chris Johans in this 12 car is now setting up, is unintentionally jamming up the field here. We got a pretty good battle for eighth going on here between Johans, Cooper, Bates, and company here. As of the 12, trying to hold off the triple seven, and if there's anyone who is known for making a dive bomb move, might be that triple seven car, but he's also known for being a bit of a brick wall, and apparently that's what he's doing in ninth right now. And, um, it uh, looks like they're trying to. It looks like Nasova may be falling away from this group in the back, and Lewis Kingston way in the back there in that second blue car might be catching up. But Scott Bates is running his teammate, and the 88 is through. The 88 is in ninth now, and uh, uh, Scott Bates is capable of setting up a lot more, you know, a lot more clean passing maneuvers and a lot more successful passing maneuvers. I think we should point that out. Oh, Stoidler having a run in the triple seven car. Jahans begins to stretch away in the uh, 12 car. Here's the 13 of uh, Stoidler. Woodard waiting in the wings. Cooper squeezes the 13 down just a little bit and denied. Cooper holds on to the position and now Woodard's got a run on the 13. Greg Woodard, nope. Woodard does not poke his nose in. He's not close enough. But Woodard's sending a signal to the 13 that uh, if you make a move, I am here. And now Woodard net Blue and green car. Now we get to, now we'll look at Johans. Scott Bates a little bit lower. Cooper a little bit higher. In through this um, section of uh, through this section of corners. Just Stoiler, that 13 car not handling very well. Looks like. And now Scott Bates peeks it in. He's gonna have a run on Chris Johans. Greg Woodard in the meantime is trying to set up Scott Stoiler. As now Greg Woodard. No Scott Bates. Woodard thought about it a bit. Scott Bates slides it a bit. Johans gives him space. Uh, now Scott Bates tries to stick it in. No, he loses it again. That car all sorts of out of shape. Cooper gets a better exit there, and now he's going to have a run on his teammate in the hairpin here. Is he going to make it stick? No. Stoiler tries uh, sticking it in, but it looks like maybe a little bit of contact with the 41. And he had to sort of catch the car there. Scott Bates is now setting up Chris Johans again. Bates throws it in. Oh, this 12 car is really, really giving him a hard time. Chris Johans in the launch, ultraviolet grape car. No, Scott Bates does not have enough there to get by Johans. This, this is a pretty good battle going on here. Scott Bates has not given up. This is really the best battle on the racetrack, by the way. It's now that Scott Bates peeks it in on the inside of the 12. He's throwing, gonna try to throw it up the inside into turn two here. No, not quite, not quite. No, not quite. Oh, Johans squeezes him out just a bit. Bates onto the grass. Onto the grass, over the curb, and no, that might have been a big accident. But um, Scott Bates and uh, teammate Ian Cooper right there, nose to tail. Now Scott Bates trying to, is giving this 12 car all sorts of headaches. Now he's got it on the inside here. 88 car is going to try to go on through. He's got a better run here. Scott Bates has got a much better run on the 12 car here. Is he going to make it stick? Looks like he is. Scott Bates is going through. Scott Bates makes the pass stick. The triple seven car doesn't. Uh, Cooper slides that car. Scott Stoitler jammed up, and so is Greg Woodard. Scott Bates makes the move stick and move the 88 car up to P8. Scott Bates, great move there. Hodges Walter Racing brings Adrian Devereaux into the pits at half distance, looks like. Yep, Melanie Clavino follows suit. Scott Stoitler in the 13 car looks like got around everyone else back there, and he is... Keeping that car out a bit longer. Looks like the Lynx cars are staying out, and so is Scott Bates in the 88. Kingston wide in the background, misses the wall. Thankfully, that would have been a pretty me that would have been a pretty mega accident. Scott Stoidler moved him up to eighth. The Sova has moved up as well. So this 13 car having a uh, pretty solid running so far. 
Bates and Johans now running together. This is um, after the after yes. Here we go. Here's the running order right now. After pit stops have cycled out, so Stoiler won the battle for eighth during the pit cycle. Bates makes the run inside the 12. The 12 squeezes them out a bit. Oh, the 88s in the grass. Here you come. Oh, they get together and Scott Bates wipes out Chris Johans. I'm not sure if he felt like he uh, Johans dealt him a bad hand there, or if he just did, or if he. Uh, or what the deal was there, but uh, either way, Scott Bates and the 12 of Chris Johans got together, and now they're both dropping through the field, and there's the Manicore cars, both of them having a good day here, going by Chris Johans. And uh, the former uh, Arla, Park, whatever you want to call it, series champion, is in trouble. Well, it was called the Arla series when he was, it was called Arla when he won the title there. Bates slid it in there. Bates gave him plenty of room, 12 didn't want to give him any. There they go. Off the track they go. Well, uh, I'm not quite sure if the term you pinch, you pay applies there. That's not exactly uh, the most um, a section of corners that the drivers have given a lot of praise to. Here's Packer Carroll attacking Lewis Kingston. Packer really having a good day so far in the old tour car. Didn't exactly uh, cover himself with glory at Brandon's hatch. Uh, he's undoing all that damage right now. Uh, he's Packer Carroll seems to have inherited uh, Tom Delgado's streak of being able to manipulate the press because he was being very down on himself in the press, but here he comes on his teammate. No, nope, thinks twice. Um, the Avenger shuts the door on him. But uh, he's have inherited Tom Delgado's uh, skill of uh, manipulating the press to think you're going to have a terrible week and then uh, to take all the attention off, and then all of a sudden... Whammo, you come out with a great result. Here's Yuli Nasova and Scott Stoiler doing battle for eighth. Stoiler defends, Nasova attacks around the eight. Nope, Nasova doesn't quite have the grip there. Looks like the Lynx cars aren't able to really make that move work like the Hodges Walter cars are able to. Nasova in the 10 um, uh, has been one of those drivers that we can you know, normally count on for about a win a year. Uh, here is Carlos Riquet in the 14, Brandon LaRoe battling for 25th. Oh! Oh, LaRoe, oh, LaRoe, no! And there was no attempt to avoid a collision there. 88 uh, and Melrose at least tried to avoid a collision. Uh, LaRoe straight up tried to take the 14 out and succeeded, uh, kind of. Uh, there was clearly something that we didn't know about that we weren't watching here. Uh, so I, I think LaRoe and Raquetta might have been running each other a little too hard for a while, and I think LaRoe may have gotten tired of it. And here is a Lennox sliding the 23 wide. Oh, this isn't going to work. Yep, into the wall, across the track. And Joe Lennox, terrible weekend continues. Then again, Team Sorry USA has had an awful week in general. I think he and Cameron Taylor will be quite happy that this weekend is over. Anyways, battle for 11th now between Kingston and Packer. Carlos Christian Hans roughing up the other EFR car. Ian Cooper, who takes a swipe at him. Oh, as Packer Carroll in the meantime is going through to take 11th from his teammate. Packer having a great run here. This is probably a better run, uh, probably a, uh, the best drive I've seen out of Packer Carroll in his career. Even more so than his only series win. As Benoit Vukler appears to be in trouble in the 42 car. Or is he, or is he going just going a lap down as... Stoiler defends from Nasova. Nasova runs him a bit wide, but Stoiler uh, kind of did that on his own. Nasova loses the rear end of that car. That 10 car is not handling very well, and neither is that 13 car. As they're trying to close in on Davina Henton, the English woman in car number 11. Here is Ingrid Hadeland in car number 93, who's kept it on the lead lap. This car that was pretty much hodgepodge put together by half the, half the garage, seemingly. Um, just to make it to the grid, Ingrid Hadeland in the 93 car, it's slowing down, Ingrid Hadeland's, Ingrid Hadeland's dream maybe, no, I, I think they can get this thing back to the pits, oh, Ingrid's been into the wall somewhere, but the 93 car slowing a puncture, I think, on Hadeland's car, tough call for a rookie, and there's Luciano Savaro pitting with the Togliatti, that's Carpenko in the car, in the 63 car, and now we're back to Ian Cooper and... Chris Johans doing battle for 13th. Oh, Johans takes a swipe, the triple seven. Oh, the triple seven's off. Oh, uh oh. Oh, I know. Yep, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> Similar to Brandon LaRoe, no attempt to let the 12 car go by cleanly. 
And, oh! Uh-oh. Yep! Steward send out, yep, triple seven car, you are done, son. Just leave the car there, you're not running anymore. Yeah, they touched, Ian Cooper jumps over the curb. Mm, yeah, there was no attempt to make that one work. Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> well, I might, um, I might not be surprised if a points penalty heads out to the triple seven car, but um, yeah, that was not on at all as we return now to the battle for 8th. Yulina Sova versus Scott Stoidler. Stoidler in the uh, the alert car right there. No! Nasova not able to get it to... Oh, maybe she is. Stoidler rigging Nasova a hard time. Nasova slides it again, and Stoidler's able to hang on. Scott Stoidler in that 13 car doing a great job of defending here from um, Yulina Sova, who is determined as hell to get by. And uh, Stoiler sliding it through. And Asova tries to make something work here. And Asova made a last lap pass here before. Yes, there she goes. Nasova on through. The same move that won her the race here two years ago. Right on Scott Stoiler. That's a move that not anyone but Nasova, I think, has tried that. And uh, has tried that successfully today. Stoiler back to. Is Stoiler drops back a place. Nasova caught him off guard. And uh, that's what you have to do when you build the pressure on someone like that as Adrian Devereaux has lapped Matthias Taub in the background. Devereaux has pulled well away from his teammate in front of the home crowd here. Adrian Devereaux, very much the crowd favorite here. As Kevin Dwyer in car number eight is chasing Leonard Rotter for the final podium spot. Uh, Kevin Dwyer from St. Cloud, Minnesota having a fantastic run so far. Son of six-time Master Cup Series champion Ben Dwyer showing some potential after a couple of years of mediocre cars. As Scott Soidler now trying to fend off Greg Woodard in the 41 like Koya. Greg Woodard has uh, himself having a, a pretty solid drive here today. I think Woodard can uh, safely say that he's having a good run here. Packer Carroll in the 18 car is... Oh, oh man, of course, calling him in early. Oh, that's a mistake, guys. Why? I don't see any wisdom in bringing Packer in early. He needs to defend. Devereaux in the seven car hits a little bit earlier than I think he was going to, but I think he's gonna. You think he's cutting it safe, maybe? Melanie Clavino in about a lap later in the two car. Roderick staying out a little bit longer, trying to protect third. He's. I think he's a little too far back to give uh, the hottest Walter cars a challenge. But I think Melanie Clavino's crew may have fluffed that pit stop a little bit. So Roderick may be in some hope here of catching the two car at least. But he's also got to protect third from uh, Kevin Dwyer and Zelda Ashby, who are both hounding him for that spot. Devereaux leads after the uh, final round of pit stops. Clavino well back in second. A uh, terrible... Melanie, the 55 is half a second quicker than you. Do not let her pass. Repeat, do not let the 55 pass. So I think that's Alan Hodge is on the radio. There is Ashby in the background. And if uh, Ashby's half a second quicker than Clavino, then Clavino's got a lot more things to worry about. And that might be a hurry up signal for Melanie. Roderick has gone back to fourth. And Ashby to third. Is Ryan Griffin the unsung hero or one of them? He's running up in 15th right now. The uh, Great Lakes Motorsports crew ran with VJ Pushanda last year. They've gone with Griffin this year, who got his master license a little bit surprisingly. He uh, lost his TM Lights competitor's license uh, for most of last year, and uh, Griffin and his 57 car doing a pretty good job. As you see, uh, Michael Humphreys is actually running right in front of him, challenging Packer Carroll for 13th. So, um, so a good day for some of the Independence Trophy guys. As here is... Kevin Dwyer, car number eight, uh, running in position five. B5, trying to lap Tom Moore, who doesn't know what a blue flag is. And um, uh, there's Moore cutting off Dwyer. Not really, I think, uh, oh, the 19's all over the place. Kevin Dwyer uh, way off the gas. Oh, and Moore almost knocks it out in the final turn. And Kurt Pliskin's got a big run. Big run on Kevin Dwyer, and Pliskin goes by. Uh, the uh, Minnesota-born Kevin Dwyer is probably not going to be uh, sending Tom Moore any um, congratulations after this race unless they are with uh, his right hand. 
And uh, here is Ashby now, who is really beginning to run Melanie Clavino down as Taub in the 21 car is uh, not really getting in the way, but could potentially hold Melanie Clavino up. Ashby in the 55 car going, trying to go for her second. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Devereaux is in trouble. Devereaux is in trouble, Adrian. Devereaux is slowing. Devereaux is slowing after dominating this race. The seven car is going to be out of it. Devereaux brings it to a stop. Disgustedly climbs out of the car. And Adrian Devereaux's day is done, putting Melanie Clavino in the lead of the race. Ashby, I was going to say Ashby going for her second podium of the year. But this could be second win of the year. Melanie Clavino has either been on the podium or crashed out of every race so far this year, including winning that thriller at Carbondale. And now she's gotten around Taub. Let's see if Ashby clears Taub with any more difficulty. No, not quite. Taub giving uh, Ashby a little bit of a headache there, but Ashby's going to get some draft from the 21 coming down the main straight. Melanie Clavino doesn't have too much time left uh, to hold off Ashby's. Uh, but the 55 is really beginning to close in. Zelda Ashby now trying to hunt down Melanie Clavino. In car number two, the Alona, the Alona car is now trying to uh, protect that lead. Is Ashby really closing in now? Roderick in the four car is a distant third. He's got nothing as the white flag is out. Melanie Clavino and Zelda Ashby doing battle for the lead here. Roderick bit further back. Roderick poses no challenge whatsoever. It's just between Clavino and Ashby as Clavino goes a bit wider than, than Ashby does. I don't think Ashby will have anything going down to two. I don't think so here, but Ashby did get a bit more of a, did get a stronger run through here. There's the, there's the Togliatti. Could the Togliatti be a factor here? Clavino in the two. Ashby in the 55. Ashby really closing in now. Ashby really reeling Melanie Clavino in. The Black Diamond Racing Team trying to go three wins in a row as they're, they're really closing in on the Togliatti. Clavino going a bit wider through here. Then Ashby is trying to get a bit more, trying to get a bit of a stronger run. Bit of draft on the Togliatti. Ashby not really closing in as much as I would expect, but both of them really closing in on that 63 car. Let's see what Vitelli Carpinko in the Togliatti does. He could be a huge factor here as uh, Clavino and Ashby now nose to tail practically. They're all over the back of Carpinko. Clavino a bit wide on the exit. Ashby's got to run here, but they've got to run in the back of the 60. No, oh, Ashby not close enough anyway. Go, and there goes the Togliatti. He goes wide, and he's being very gentlemanly about it. But Ashby's got to run now. Ashby has a run very gentlemanly by Vitaly Karpinko, the Russian. As now the end of the last couple of corners for the last time. This got to be it. Ashby's got to make something here. It's got to be now. Melanie Clavino through the final chicane. Slides it a bit. Ashby's got to run. Ashby's going to stick her nose out. Not close enough. Melanie Clavino looks like she's going to do it. Melanie Clavino denies Ashby a last corner run. And Clavino wins another thriller this time. The, this time in France. Melanie Clavino wins a very thrilling duel at, there at the end. Over Ashby. Roderick third. Pliskin fourth. And Scott Stoiler rounding up the top five for alert. Greg Woodard, Davina Henton, Kevin Dwyer has to settle for eighth. The eight car actually went off the track in the last lap. We kind of missed that. There was a much better battle going on elsewhere. Yulina Sova in car number 10 in ninth. And Lewis Kingston rounds out the top 10. Andershun, Michael Humphreys, great runs for them. Packer Carroll lost about a battle there with Humphreys near the end. Uh, Scott Bates comes home 15th. Uh, then Chris Davenport, Luciano Savarol, Jacob Card, I think they're kicking themselves for that strategy call. Raketa and Short round out the points finishers. One look at the Drivers' Championship shows Ashby on top over Clavino, Rossini, and Devereaux. I wouldn't really count anyone uh, here out except for Yamino Tenchi on the basis that the 25 car is not running the whole season. Uh, with that being said, uh, Clavino and Devereaux are still very serious contenders, as well as both of the Volpes. Uh, while it doesn't look like the Volpes have race-winning pace yet, I would stress the key word, yet. Axel Andersson in the 74 car is having a great start to the year for the Michelin Suns. Power Sting Incorporated and Gessler's guys could both be in for some uh, serious title runs here. Uh, however, Kevin Dwyer needs to pick things up very quickly. Both the Lynx cars need to sort of hustle, get a hustle on it if uh, uh, if they're going to be championship contenders again. But remember, they went 1-2 at Coriolis last year, and uh, that's coming up rather soon, and that's a double points race. 
Let's have one look at the Independence Trophy. Cariella does count for the Independence Trophy, so I wouldn't count Ike Durbin's lead in the Independence Trophy as safe at all, even though he's run three, uh, three races so far. Remember, for the Independence Trophy, it's best four results count, uh, not discounting promoter's options. So Ryan Matthews' efforts today have no impact on his uh, Independence Trophy standing one way or the other. Carpinko could still be a threat. Togliatti was actually uh, quite threatening last year, but we still have a long way to go. So let's look forward to the next race, the Round of Sweden.